Hey guys, I'm Roger Wakefield, Elite AP V Expert Plumber, and today, thanks to the wonderful people over at Bradford White, we're going to talk about a natural gas water heater, what's inside of it, and how it works. And we're going to talk about it right now. Okay guys, we're gonna start right here because this is the part of the water heater you see. When you walk up, there's two ways to tell if your water heater is a gas water heater. First of all, you've got a gas control valve. Now it goes down to a burner assembly, but the thing to look at on the front is do you have a gas control valve that sticks out of the water heater? The other thing is up on top, you're gonna have a three or four inch round galvanized pipe that comes up out of the top of it. This is the flue pipe. This is what takes those gas exhaust fumes and takes them outside the roof and gets them out to keep you and your family from being in danger. Your gas control valve is where you look at to light your pilot light. It's also where you have your thermostat. This is where you set it at vacation, warm, hot, very hot, be careful at what you set it at because the higher you set it, the quicker you can scald people. Now, if you have children or elderly people in your family, you really don't want to set it too high, leave it set low, and just know that it's going to take it a little bit longer to make water because you're going to use more hot water at a lower temperature. So your gas control valve is where you can turn off your water heater too. Now I recommend if your water heater is leaking and you turn it off there, also reach over to your gas valve on the wall, turn the gas off to your water heater. And your gas will actually come in the side through either a flex connector or a nipple with a drip leg. A nipple and a drip leg is current code and that's what's gonna have to be done if you have to update yours. One thing I really like about the Bradford Watt water heaters is the full metal drain valve. This has got a quarter turn ball valve on it. Instead of having a handle though, it has a set screw. You take a flat blade screwdriver, stick it in the slot, turn it 90 degrees, and that opens it to drain it. Now, as you've seen in some of my other videos, you need to flush your water heater at least once a year, but you only start this at either a new water heater, maybe a couple of years. If your water heater is much older than that, don't start flushing it now because you could clear out some cracks on the inside and actually make your water heater start leaking. Guys, once again, thanks to Bradford White for doing this for us. They opened up this water heater where I can show you what's inside your gas water heater. Now, as we've talked about before, your cold water dip tube, that's gas or electric. It comes in, it goes almost all the way to the bottom, stops about six inches from the bottom. And it's got little cuts in the tube, so water actually comes out at an angle on this Defender Series to help clean out the inside of it. This helps keep the calcium and magnesium from building up in the bottom of your water heater. And if you can see around here on the back side, that's your anode rod. Now on the Bradford Watt water heaters, that's also where your hot water goes out. So when you hook up to that metal adapter, the hot water comes in and goes out right at the top, and then it's anode rod down at the bottom. Now the anode rod is very important in a water heater. After the first year or so of a water heater, it's a good idea to change your anode rod out. The anode rod is actually a sacrificial rod that if there's any cracks or any microscopic holes or anything on the inside of the tank, the anode rod will sacrifice itself and plug up that hole. Whenever you pull out the old anode rod, you'll see it's like it's dissolved from the bottom up. The good thing about it is that's what they're made for. They are made to make your water heater last longer. On a gas water heater right here in the middle, this is your flue pipe. Now the fire is down below. So your water heater actually has a tube that goes right up the middle of it. And this is where the exhaust fumes come from the burnt gas in the bottom. Now, the way that they're designed, that hot gas spins around, so all this pipe on the inside is also surface area that's used to heat your water heater. This makes them more efficient. And as you can see, they've got little paddles built out to actually help force that heat out that makes that surface hotter and therefore makes your water heat faster. Now, down in the bottom is where you've got your burner assembly and your pilot light. Your pilot light is what keeps the gas lit, keeps the fire there so it knows when it's time to light. Now your pilot light and your thermocouple are what let this happen. Your thermocouple actually with a pilot light, the thermocouple creates an energy to open a valve to let the gas flow through. The neat thing about it is you can actually unhook everything, unhook your burner assembly from your control valve and take it apart and slide the entire assembly out. 
That's how we change out the thermocouple. That's how we change out the burner assembly. Guys, another thing, see how thick the insulation is? April 15th, 2016, they had to change water heater efficiency and make them more efficient. The way they did, they made the wall thicker, they put more insulation on top. This helps make them more efficient and makes you have more hot water. One other thing on the water heater, the TMP valve. Guys, this is a critical safety device. What this does is if the water gets too hot or there gets to be too much pressure, these are made to release and let that pressure go. That's why it's very important that they be piped to the outside of the building where they will not spray and scald anybody. The TMP valves are the same on gas and electric water heaters. So guys, on top of your water heater, you've got your flue pipe assembly. This is actually the chimney and collar that attaches to the top of the water heater and then your type B, and actually inside the house you can still go single wall. I like bringing type B vent all the way down. It's double wall, keeps anybody from getting hurt or scalded if they do reach in here and touch anything. But it will go up, tie onto the vent, go out the roof. Remember to have your one inch clearance anywhere that your type B vent pipe goes. Also on top of your water heater, you got your cold water inlet and your hot water outlet. The good thing about your cold water inlet, if you come up off it, you should have a quarter turn ball valve. This is how you shut off the water to your water heater. That's good to know because if you have a leak on your water heater or a hot water leak in your house, if you turn off this valve, that can turn off the water and you can still have running water in your kitchen and to your toilets. I wanna say thanks to the people at Bradford White, the water heaters and the things that they've done to help me get this information to you. Bradford White has gone above and beyond what I could ever expect from anybody. But then again, that's kind of what their water heaters do. If you hadn't done it yet, please click the subscribe button. And if you want to, please leave us comments down below and let us know what you think or what information we can give you. My name's Roger Wakefield with Texas Green Plumbing, saving you money one drop at a time.